that the best way to eliminate oneself is through a knowledge. And what are the success mantras? What are the key habits for that? And amongst us, we have Professor Dr. Raj Singh, who, is a, who has just joined as a vice chancellor yesterday in the Jain Deem University in Bangalore. First of all, congratulations. And your fact that you have been a vice chancellor and an advisor to key educational institutions shows that the universities the actually wish that they should be taken a lead forward and they should be eliminated by your thought processes and your thought processes, which you had on the last time informed us that consistent reading, trying to change yourself to, to move forward is a way forward of life and thinking ahead in life. And like we quite often say in our life that what is a word habit? And it is just it, then bit, a bit, and then habit. And habit for a good, good deed and good action is always welcome. And they say that life is just like a rock and you have been given the instruments to chisel the extra thing out. And whenever you chisel these things, you come out as an idol or a statue or whatever we say that let's assume you go to a hotel or a good resort, you will always find a welcome, these icons, etc., which are actually a work of hard work, toil, etc. And it's also that you rub the wrong th things out and bring the best things forward. And in that pursuit, we requested Dr. Raj Singh. We thought there couldn't be a better way from a vice chancellor giving message down the line, not only to the university, which he has joined recently, but to all his students and all his followers. Because we know that being a Diwali, people are engaged. We thought that it will be a, more like a snippet talk, short, crisp. And we like we, what we often say, that any talk should be concise, precise, and incise. With that endeavor and pursuit, we requested Dr. Raj Singh. So we will have a short talk. We are not having any question answers, but just to have a positive thought, which we can look, move forward and in life and have a thought, a food for thought for Diwali and onwards. Over to you, Dr. Raj Singh. Thank you, Vikas ji. Uh, in the meantime, if you can allow me to share uh, some slides. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, everyone. Happy Diwali. Uh, it's nice to be back with you again uh, in almost a let me be less than a fortnight and uh, thank you so much for joining uh, on a holiday on a special festival diwali it only means that uh, we have already developed certain habits which are positive habits good habits so before i start a uh, couple of things uh, uh, as as i'm allowed to uh, yeah say, yeah say, Darling, uh, number here. one last time uh, in my talk, I had spoken about uh, self-awareness, that if we know ourselves, we can solve many problems, we can relate to others much better, and we can live maybe a oh, smoother right, and conflict-free, <laughs> or maybe conflict-less uh, life. So I may uh, try to link to that through some concept check, quick concept check, so that we are reminded of that, and uh, we are on, on the same grid. And the second thing, uh, even though there are many habits, even um, Vikas Ji mentioned about many habits, I'm sure each one of you is practicing some habit. Today, whatever I uh, mention are the habits which I have, in my own humble way, learned from others and practiced in my own life. Because I have no right to talk about habits which I don't practice. That would amount to preaching. It won't be practical. So uh, these two things, I'll try to also uh, cite examples from where I have learned and uh, see if you can even take one habit and uh, try to uh, imbibe in your life. Uh, I would consider that uh, Diwali well spent and Diwali to be more and more illuminated uh, through this knowledge if I can be uh, able to transfer it to uh, you all. That screen sharing has been allowed. Yeah. You can see that? Yes. Great. So, uh, as uh, you all are aware of the, the topic, habits. And um, when Vikas Ji spoke to me on Diwali, we had to have a short talk and I gave him a few choices and he chose this. So let me, uh, without uh, taking much time because time allowed is quite short in any case, 
uh, come to this. So you can keep on uh, sending your response on chats as you feel like, because there are some questions in the first couple of slides. I'll keep on moving, I'll keep on reading, you can keep on reading on your screen, and at the same time, keep responding. Don't stop from responding. In fact, uh, 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 one of the greatest authors, philosophers, and um, writers who uh, made waves and brought some bestsellers, uh, he didn't live long, he lived only 47 years, Khalil Gibran. Uh, I was reading him and he says that the only question that rendered me mute was when someone asked me an answer to the question, who am I? Last time we dealt with this question in self-awareness, that how do I describe myself? And uh, even though we spoke about it, it's not possible to describe oneself fully, but it's extremely, extremely uh, difficult question. And I'm sure you must have faced this situation in your lives when somebody asks you, why do you exist? What do you exist for in your life? What's the meaning of life? And all those kind of questions. So uh, this question, um, as I said, I'm, I'm raging. You can start responding. I'll take you through a couple of slides and please respond as much as uh, possible because there's no answer which is wrong. So all the answers will be correct. It depends on how we understand ourselves. I'm your constant companion I'm your greatest helper or heaviest burden. I'll push you onward or drag you down to failure. I'm completely at your command. How the things you do might just as well as turn over to me and I'll be able to do them quickly and correctly. I'm easily managed. You must merely be firm with me. Show me exactly how you want something to done and after a few lessons, I'll do them automatically. Who am I? The question continues and some more clues to all of you. I'm the servant of all great people and alas, of all failures as well. Those who are great have made them great. Those who are failures have made them failures. I'm not a machine though I work with all the precision of a machine, plus the intelligence of a human. You may run me for profit or run me for ruin. It makes no difference to me. Take me, train me, be firm with me, and I'll place the world at your feet. Be easy with me, and I'll destroy you. Who am I? I can see some responses. Let me see what responses have come in. I've just written habits. You've written habits. So yes, the, the answer is uh, I'm your habit. Uh, uh, friends, uh, you know, uh, in your neighborhood, in your relations, in your friend circle, sometimes you describe a person by the habit he or she has. It's such a powerful role in a life of habits. We get to be known by our habits. If there are good habits, we are known to be good. If there are bad habits, we are known to be bad. I think it is that powerful an influence habits have on your life. Personal life, professional life, social life, everywhere. And, and uh, the most subtle thing is that Many habits we do not even know people are observing. They become part of our existence. They become uh, part of our unconscious or semi-conscious mind. And when we exhibit those habits, only others can observe, I don't even realize. And that's the subtlety involved in, in habits. So we have to be uh, extremely careful and train ourselves, get used to certain things because the world is watching us and they uh, describe us by those habits, as I said. These famous lines, I'm sure uh, everyone has read, saw a thought, reap an action, saw an action, reap a habit, and from habit onwards, saw a habit, reap a character, and saw a character, reap a destiny. These beautiful lines are written by Stephen Covey in his Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And then I'm sure you know, he also came up with uh, the eighth habit which became equally famous. And it shook people to the core that how 
small things which we don't observe can make such a huge difference in our lives. I'll mention to you about these four winning habits which I have learned in my life. And the first habit is be first on, last off, and add extra value. As Vikasi mentioned that being on time is a good habit. I recommend that any meeting, any uh, place you have to visit, any commitment, be five minutes before and be the last one to leave and make such a huge difference. Today, when I logged in, in fact, there was nobody. So I checked with the Kasi's and he immediately was almost simultaneously we logged in at about uh, uh, 9.54 or so. Why I'm saying this, that first five minutes and the last five minutes of any activity, any meeting uh, are the crux. Because five meetings in the five minutes in the beginning, they set the context why we are here for. And last five minutes conclude. And if you're there in between, that may be of sometimes no value or very less value because you have missed the essence. And extra, add extra value. Whatever commitment you have, suppose you've been given a mandate, you've been asked to give one, two, three, four kind of outcomes, you must go beyond that. Add extra value because otherwise you'll be asked questions again. So be proactive and add extra value in whatever responsibility you have. The second one is never trade results for excuses. So when we are not able to do something, we come up with 10 excuses. No, this is a great excuse. That the kind of time and efforts we spend in framing excuses, if we do that in perhaps putting in effort into the task, we won't have the requirement of giving uh, excuses because who are we giving it for? Who are we um, making suffer if we give excuses? It's only we and no one else. Uh, I had the uh, uh, opportunity of uh, reading and getting uh, greatly influenced by one of the uh, all-time best athletes called Arthur Ashe, uh, who had won 10, 12 uh, medals in Olympics. And uh, unfortunately, he passed away in 1996 uh, of AIDS. And towards the end of his life, he, he turned into a great humanitarian, a great follower of uh, Mother Teresa, and uh, during his last few hours or in that year, uh, he said something which was, uh, I think, published all over the world, these few lines which he had said. And Arthur asked, you know what he said? To achieve greatness, start where you are. Do not keep on blaming the past that had I been born in that family, had I been there, I would be great. Uh, he said, start wherever you are. Future depends on you and you can't undo the past. There's nothing like an undo button as we have in the computer. If you commit a mistake, you can rectify it. In life, there is no undo button. So he says to achieve greatness, start where you are, use what you have. Don't worry about what you don't have because each one of us is not equal, but we achieve equal results. And sometimes someone who's deprived can achieve better results. But he says, most importantly, do what you can. And that each one of us has in us, the efforts, the initiative, and the, 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 the hard work that is in us and nobody gifts us. We don't inherit from anyone. It's just by practice and developing those habits. Uh, we, we therefore do not have to give excuse for not being able to do something. But there are a hundred ways of doing the same thing or thousand ways of doing the same thing. The, the third habit, which has helped me greatly in life is solve problems in advance. Whenever you uh, take any step, when you take any decision, when you say something to somebody, please think twice the outcomes of that, possible outcomes. And if you have slightest doubt that this action of mine will lead to wrong outcomes, don't do that or change your action because actions lead to your character, your habits, your destiny. And therefore, uh, the, the, the concept of solving problems in advance is that think of the outcomes before you take a step. And if you develop this habit, uh, believe me, uh, you will commit lesser and lesser mistakes. The outcomes will be more and more positive and success will be greater and greater. And fourth thing, which you, most people don't do, it's in the human nature, it's the human psyche, uh, is that always make those around you look good. We often try to pull others down. We uh, are very, very miser in praising people, even if they achieve great things. 
uh, please appreciate people and appreciate them in public and make them look as if they are everything in this world. Why? Because if you're surrounded by good people, uh, you will automatically look good. Uh, one of my uh, cousins, he's a very senior um, um, army of, retired army officer, uh, army veteran. You know what he said, that you may become uh, a mayor of a city, you may become minister, you may become prime minister, but if you do not pull up the people around you, your own family members, your own society, neighborhood, village, mohalla, city, or where you come from, who have given you everything, uh, he said you won't have even anybody to talk to. You won't have anybody to uh, to sit with and uh, talk something uh, uh, sensible because you will always find a mismatch between the caliber. And therefore he says, while you develop yourself, see that you develop everybody around you and make them feel as if they are in no way less than you or they're always uh, greater than you, always better than you and see the joy of this. You will automatically feel illuminated and feel uh, important. Develop the habit of evaluating options in life. Uh, we often say that we are in a choiceless world, but believe me, we have a lot of choices. We often don't make because you're not in the habit of evaluating choices. Um, one of my friend always says jokingly, he says, uh, uh, we have many choices which we um, don't make and we crave about the choices we don't have. For example, uh, we can't choose our parents. Parents are given to us. And, and he said, but we can choose our parents in law. Uh, he says, we, we, we cannot choose our neighbors, but we can choose our own house. Uh, this is such a beautiful thing. He says, we cannot choose our boss. Boss is given to us, but we can always choose an organization. So if you find something where there are choices and there are better choices, get into the habit of uh, evaluating them and then take the best choice. And between uh, the, the stimulus or something which generate action and you act, there's always a time lag. In fact, this is also highlighted in, in a complete book by Stephen Covey, The Eighth Habit. It has also been spoken about Robin Sharma, who's one of the all time great uh, uh, trainer and motivator. Uh, he has mentioned about the stimulus and response. And there are many other great leaders who have talked about it because they practice it. So when you have options, always evaluate them and then take a decision rather than taking impulsive decisions, hasty decisions without consulting anybody, without being supported by data and otherwise. Uh, wrong habits are infectious. Uh, in fact, some of the bad habits uh, which we have in us, uh, we particularly uh, appreciate this in academic institution where you have smaller kids and the, the elder kids. Uh, they catch wrong habits very, very fast. They're like infectious diseases. But believe me, good habits are equally infectious. So we don't have to worry that only wrong habits are infectious, but good habits are also there. If you inculcate good habits, people around you will also adopt it from you. Uh, from my own experience, uh, personal experiences, I have tried to list down these five, six habits, and I'm sure if you can pick up one and start implementing today onwards, they'll make huge difference. We all have 24 hours, but some of us uh, give better output than others. And there are very, very small, minor things which make a difference. And the first one is that rise early and plan your day. Believe me, um, uh, I always uh, wake up between 5 and 5.30 in the morning and these two, three additional hours make my day look like having 48 hours or 50 hours or 60 hours because there's no disturbance. You're fresh with mind, you're full of energy and you're concentrated. There's no, no, no sound even from outside except chirping of the birds. It is divine. It makes you feel so nice that uh, uh, your 24 hours start looking like 48 hours, as I said. And then when you start your day, uh, sort out minor irritants, but they're significant because they have impact in your thought process, they impact in your life and the work-life balance. And they don't take time. Some of them will take two minutes, some of them will take 30 seconds, some of them will take maybe five minutes. So if you list down that during the day I have to do this, first sort out these minor but significant things and then you will have entire day free uh, without any disturbance and restrictions where you solve which the, the things which are very, very significant take longer time, sometimes days and weeks. So you have free, free day for that. And in any case, uh, your small irritants will not really uh, affect you in this. Believe me, it rejuvenates you. It, it gives you so much of confidence when you start solving these problems. Avoid time wasters, prioritize and deprioritize. 
we uh, spend hours and hours in things which are absolutely have no priority in our lives. Or uh, for example, you start chatting, keep on chatting for two hours on Facebook, on WhatsApp, on uh, it becomes a nuisance in life. Um, I have been fortunate enough to meet some great people in life and uh, who have influenced me. About seven to eight years ago, I uh, happened to meet Saina Nehwal. At that time, she was number two seed in the world. And she says, sir, I have to become number one, come what may. His father is a professor. She's the daughter of a professor. So we asked her during the informal interaction that, uh, uh, Saina, you practice 14 hours a day, including Saturday, Sunday festivals. Don't you have friends, girls and boys? Don't they ask you? Don't they want to spend time with you? Don't you feel like going out with them and play and uh, have a picnic and some uh, informal time with them? And you know what he, what he said, and it shook me and rather, rather changed me for life, for uh, rest of my life. She said, sir, uh, fortunately, my parents are very positive, both of them. They don't discourage me, they only encourage me. My father will take leave and be with me wherever I need to be uh, for days and weeks if required. And, and she says, whoever sounds negative even once, I block them, I stop meeting them, I remove them from my life. Because to achieve the kind of success I want to achieve, one has to be absolutely ruthless in terms of habits. Nothing can deter me from 14 hours on the court every day, come what may. And she said, I have been doing it for last 10 years. In the time I was a school child, I have never, never uh, allowed this to go away. Even at the cost of certain people who are very close family friends, I absolutely negate them as if they don't exist. I don't want to surround myself with negative people and only and only positive people. Meditate, now meditate doesn't mean that you have to take help of some um, uh, specialist, uh, learn some good exercises, just be with yourself, I would say. The being with self, it's, it's like a mo uh, meditation kind of thing. Exercise, eat less, but eat well. Believe me, these small things which you often ignore, like we don't eat on time, we don't eat certain things which you should be, we eat certain things which should not be. I think some kind of self-discipline uh, really, really, helps you, it will always keep you young, it will always keep you shining, it will all keep you motivated and energetic. Believe me, uh, as you move beyond 30 years, energy levels become one of the significant criteria of success in the career and also the jobs and everything. Reading, never leave reading. And, and then most of us, we complain that there's no time to read into this busy life. As I said, if you wake up two, three hours early, Believe me, one or one and a half hour is so peaceful. You grasp everything. That's, at least that's what I do. Because uh, then if you have to rise early, to also sleep early on time, in fact. So morning gives me enough time to prepare for certain things, read something. And then finally, I would say, aim high. Don't keep your aims low in life. Get into the habit of this. Now, somebody may say that, uh, oh, don't try to fly. You will fall very hard. But aiming high means that I have greater chances to reach there. One of my students once said, she said, sir, a failure can be forgiven, but aiming low is a crime. She termed it as a crime. If you aim 100, you will achieve 80, but if you aim only 60, you can never reach 80. That's the power of aiming high. And the most important that if you have your aims, don't leave your aims to be achieved by somebody else. You have to commit yourself, pursue yourself, and not leave it in the hands of others always be in control. You may take help of people, you may have employees, you may have supporters, you may have team members. You have to be so focused on your goals and take charge yourself because you can't pass on the responsibility of failure to others. You have to own the responsibility. So owning the responsibility is again a matter of habit. So aim high, pursue your goals yourself and be absolutely uh, focused. And in the process, be different. Uh, who doesn't know these beautiful lines of Robert Frost is said in the school days, but they motivate me. They motivate me every moment of my life. And he said, sometimes ages and ages hence, I shall tell with a sigh, two roads I versed between wood and I, and I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. You can have umpteen number of cases of individuals and companies who did things differently and they became great. And if someone who followed the, the a beaten path, a normal path where the most of the crowd was going, uh, they remained mediocres and sometimes even went out of business. But get into the habit of always thinking different from what majority thinks 
and see the difference of this. You will fail. Don't get demoralized because sometimes the failures may outweigh the, the number of successes. And when you do that, read these lines. I'm sure again, everybody has read, I have taken very, very simple things which each one of us comes across every day. When nothing seems to help, I go and look at this stone cutter, jo torta rehta hai thode se, who is uh, sizzling as uh, the Vikas they mentioned in the beginning and uh, bring something out of it beautiful. Uh, look at this stone cutter hammering away at his rock, perhaps a hundred times, without as much a crack showing in it. Mare ja hai, but there's no crack in this stone. Yet, at hundred and first blow, it will split into two. And I wonder that how come this particular stroke was so, so uh, heavy, so strong that it split in two? No, I think it was because of those hundred, that hundred first broke into two. Hard work never goes waste. And hard work is something which is in my hand. Nobody else can do it for me. So I think out of uh, so many habits I have mentioned, if I have to mention the, the greatest habit which has helped me, if I have achieved anything in life, uh, very, very humbly, I must say this, uh, it is hard work, hard work and hard work because there's absolutely no shortcut. If hard work has to be put in, it has to be put in. Other things you can have alternatives, but there's no alternative. There's no substitute to hard work. And this is in our hands. We uh, can't blame anybody on this. So many of the habits you have seen in my talk, they have been interlinked. And if we uh, combine them, one leads to another. Uh, for example, I'm very good at planning, I'm very good at strategizing, but I don't work hard. Uh, it's a piece of paper for me. It doesn't mean anything. Someday you will tear off and throw it. We keep making big plans on the paper, but we don't implement it. So implementation, hard work, commitment are ultimately the habits which make us uh, achieve what we want to achieve in life. That's all I had. Uh, I'm sure at least one out of them uh, will influence one of you. Uh, others will affect the others. But as I said, uh, it's not that we are obliging somebody else by changing our habits. We are doing it to our own advantage. It's up to us whether we want to develop good habits or bad habits or we don't even think of them. But believe me, we as individuals are outcomes of our habit. We are known as outcomes of habits and we achieve something which our habits make us achieve. Thank you so much. Thank you Vikasji for giving this opportunity. Uh, thank you, sir. And I would say that just like you said that all habits are to be developed and the punctuality coupled with the time management is another facet, which I believe that is an important plays a paramount role in life. Like we decided that it will be a short and a snippet talk and you actually maintained that. And I can only say that as you rightly summed up, taking us through the entire gamut of various insights which could actually help us to move forward. Since it's a Diwali, we will not take much time and we can only say everyone stay safe uh, play Green Diwali as we are all saying and may the Corona be dispelled with a flux of time and we are ushering the hope and success as we have been doing all life and we are more vibrant nation, more united nations and we are looked upon by the world across as the a powerful nation under the strong leaderships of all leaders in India and pan, pan world, which can motivate, motivate us to do better. And tomorrow, uh, since we are in the holidays also, and we at the same time believe that students and the lawyers and professionals should learn. Tomorrow at 1 p.m., we will have a very important facet of the law by Justice Chandrasekhar from Karnataka, yeah, AV, uh, Chandra Shekhar, who is a former judge of Karnataka High Court from your state right now where you are nowadays there. He's a very speaker with an immense knowledge and we will be taking a session on art of cross-examination and as we all know who was in the practice of law that art of cross-examination they say it's important not only what to cross-examine and what not to cross-examine. 
just like in court we say what to make submissions and what to make not dismission you should know what part helps you to move forward and what part i will not say that you have there has to be concealment but the art of presentation is also another habit of success what you present like your presentation was immense so everyone stay safe stay blessed and enjoy the diwali and we are moving forward for a better nation thank you everyone thank you. that the number was as uh, good as last time uh, it only showed your uh, punctuality interest in learning once again happy and prosperous diwali to you and family members near and dear ones and may god bless you with all the choices blessing to us thank you so much uh, in fact the time at 10 am i had also a feeling what would be the way but people have shown even on the facebook the response is very good thank yes, you everyone that's the beauty of technology yes sir thank uh, you shaken all the boundaries and uh, of time and uh, kind of convenience that's thank true you. that's thank you